Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this picture of Mume from Hololive. So once again, we're starting off with the head. I originally was going for like a uh, frontal view, but I found that it just wasn't what I want to go with. Three quarters view is usually always the way to go. Um, well, maybe not every time, but it's it's definitely the preferred angle, so to speak. So I went through more than one sketch this go around trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. And, you know, the creative process, lots of trial and error before you come up with something that you actually like. So here I'm kind of planning out the body. Issue was I kind of had the angle all weird, so that's on me. But now we're starting to get the basic shape. Um, I had a good reference in front of me for a pose idea I wanted to try. Of course, my pose isn't one to one with the reference. Um, I find usually I want to take the pose in a different direction from the references I usually have. Um, but that's basically my thought process whenever creating something is get something close to the pose I see in my reference, but change it up ever so slightly so that the creative ideas keep coming. So yeah, I basically draw the pose first, then I adjust the size of the character for um, the composition. Now, I'm actually in the process of making a video on composition and how to um, plan out and pose your uh, composition to where it all makes sense. And that's coming in the future. So if you are looking forward to that, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Hopefully I have it coming really soon. It's just a matter of uh, planning everything out, making sure I'm, I'm easily understood. Because if it's confusing, then I haven't done my job properly. So I went for more of a happy look because Mume is, a, is one of those uh, Hall Live members who's always has a happy-ish expression. She's a person, obviously, so there are moments where she, of course, is a little less than happy. But for the most part, she's got that bubbly personality that I really, really like. She's also insane, or at least that's what the fan base likes to think. So I went for kind of like a fun, almost bouncy pose with a lot of flowy hair because, man, I love my hair long and I love it wild. So here pretty soon we're going to start coloring the sketch. Um, I was trying to figure out if I was going to add wings at first like I do sometimes, but this time I decided not to. So if we're looking in terms of composition, you'll notice the flow line goes from the head to the hair and then back to the bottom, leading the eye in the direction I want you to want it to go. Um, now we're currently doing the base colors. Um, a lot of composition is actually about leading the eye. So you want lots of motion and movement that draws people to look where you want them to look. And there are many ways you can do that. You can do that using color. You can do it using motion. You can do it using effects or lighting. The, all different kind of ideas to lead the eye from beginning to end where you want it to go. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to edit like little uh, circles or whatnot in my uh, in my uh, projects. I really want to figure out how to explain things better. I hope that at some point now that I'm monetized, if I make any money, I'm able to get an editor to really help me out because I'm going to be real, guys. I suck at editing. My stuff is so bare bones and I'm very sorry about that. So right now, all we're doing is light carving and kind of planning out the shadows for the finished artwork. Um, I ended up going almost with this final product, but I ended up changing it ever so slightly um, just because I wanted the colors to be lighter and for it to make more sense to look like Mume. So we're starting to get somewhere now, coloring the eyes, just kind of plan it out some more. And we're going to see a jump in time after I start adding some processing to it, some added glow and whatnot. But I end up changing um, the background and the clothes used later on because I liked the idea. Yeah, we've got another jump in time. I'm sorry this isn't the full process. I, I sometimes forget to hit record after I stop recording, and that's on me. Um, a big thing that'll help you with your composition is don't have the full body unless the composition is about the scene entirely. If it, the focus is on the character, make sure you're using cropping efficiently. It'll definitely help you in the long run. 
So I was going for like this background-esque uh, artwork at first, and I zoomed way out to kind of make sure everything was leading the eye properly. But I ended up kind of foregoing that in the finished product. So there was another jump in time where I changed the outfit to be a bit more scantily clad, um, showing the breasts a bit more. Again, I don't think the character would ever wear this. This is just me drawing breasts for the sake of drawing breasts. I'm not going to pretend I have some crazy deep meaning behind drawing cleavage. I literally just wanted to draw boobs. And I hope that's at least respectable. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does drive me crazy when artists try to put a meaning behind them drawing cleavage. Like, just be honest. You want to draw boobs. It's okay. So I have like the zipper brush that I got on Clipsio's asset store that I love using. Uh, also use the uh, liquify tool to shape the zipper to the jacket. I find that makes any mistakes you have while lining it out, it kind of fixes the problem. In terms of line art, um, I changed a few things from the actual um, finished artwork and kind of messed with it using the liquify tool to kind of make it shape to the body properly. I messed up a bit where the hood starts because it looks like it's digging into her skin. And I wish I had fixed that by the end result, but um, I had kind of finished the artwork and by the time it was time for me to post it, it was like, crap, I forgot it. But I wasn't going to redo it for the sake of that one thing. It, it, it's a passable artwork as it is. Now, as I've said many times in my videos, um, the point of line art is to refine and add to what is already there. It's not copy it one to one because then you're just making it have thinner lines, which isn't really how you want to do things. You want to make sure that you are lining with purpose. And I'm going to try to find a way to explain that in the near future, what lining with purpose means. But I struggle to put it into words. Basically, you just need to make sure you're confident and careful. Um, but the best thing about digital art, and I say this all the time, is control Z literally saves your life half the time. You, you can mess up as many times as you want. You can undo it. That's the powerful thing about digital art and why I love it so much. Um, whenever I draw on paper, I actually use a light box to uh, draw over a sketch, almost like how they do an animation to do the next keyframe. But I do it specifically so that I can treat it almost like a digital painting and draw on top of the sketch on a completely separate piece of paper. It uh, it made my digital my sorry my traditional art a lot better. I think I did really good on the face this time, and I'm actually not like I didn't I did okay on the eyes too, which was definitely made me happy. Um, I I've noticed I don't take as much time on eyes like I used to. I need to go back and really start doing eyes first. That way, I don't feel like fatigued by the time I get to them. I need to stop doing them last and start doing them first because my eyes used to be really, really good and now they're just kind of okay. So that's something I definitely got to fix, but we'll get to that point with the next artwork. Um, my next artwork is actually an artwork of Crony from Hololive. And I know what y'all guys are probably saying, good lord, Lost, why do you draw so much Hololive? And I'm like, I'm sorry, it's kind of my comfort art. I love Hololive, I love VTubers. I'm a big nerd for him. Um, in the end, I just kind of want to draw that, and it's worked for me. And the fan base, though much like every fan base, can be a bit intense sometimes, I truly, truly do love anime, anime and um, VTubers. There's something so cool about no matter what you look like or your background, you're able to become something you love or be that attractive, maybe that attractive person that you never were it's just, I love it. It's like, it's such a cool concept. I've always enjoyed it. The personality shines through. And if you have a good um, personality and you are able to put enough money into a model, you can really stand out. And that is something I just love so much about the VTubing community and why I kind of latched onto it as much as I did. Not to mention the fact that, like, there's something so cool about drawing fan art of a real person and having them like and comment on it. The feeling's almost like nothing before. Like, it's the equivalent of making like something like a birthday artwork for someone and then surprising them with it and they love it so much and it's like, it's just a really good feeling.
And I got addicted to that feeling, believe it or not, with Hololive having them comment on my work. They don't do it as much as they used to, mainly because my stuff has become more risque. But I'm still very happy with the fan base that I've garnered off the uh, the hard work of these VTubers who let these artists into their community and are able to share in their work. It's definitely a super, super positive thing for me, and it's why I love it so much. Sorry I went kind of on a rant about VTubers and, like, myself, but, like, I don't know, man. I just... I love VTubing so much, and I at some point I want to start making a model for myself and just being goofy and have like a video of me in the corner while I draw. I actually want to start live streaming soon too, to kind of explain my thought process and making it make sense. So with that out of the way, it's all, it's about time we start rendering, don't you think? So I started with the skin kind of, I, I kind of had to fix the background because the little borders, I ended up uh, messing up on them. <laughs> I don't know what that laugh was. I was in the middle of a cough while doing it. Ew. So I selected the breast individually so I could shape them and shade them like they're a sphere. Uh, there's a level of softness with breasts. And now that we have the uh, jacket over top, there's like a hard shadow that goes on top. And getting the breast to look soft is very difficult. I still kind of mess up on them every now and then, but I, I think I did all right here. Not terrible, at least. So now we're adding the shading to the stomach, and the stomach I did was, it was okay. It just wasn't the best. I didn't have a good reference for a stomach right here, so the result was kind of iffy. But it's passable, I would say. So I added kind of a gradient to the hair that way, and then a multiply layer on top to um, add depth or whatever. I'm not sure what the words I'm looking for are, but... Uh, just added some basic shading. I ended up kind of reducing the gradient a bit because it felt a bit much. And I went for some more uh, hard, um, it just, oh shoot, there was a jump in time there I didn't even notice. Um, wow, that's that's the hair complete without showing it. I'm so sorry about that. I actually didn't know the jump was that big. But um, now I'm starting to add some detail to the clothes. Kind of adding some in-between rim lights using multiply layers again and then erasing um, lighter parts to kind of make it more uh, full. And the eyes are not half bad. I think I did pretty good on the eyes this time. I'm a big fan of that. So now we're going to start going into some post-processing. So yay! We're starting with an add glow layer, just adding the brightness to it, add a multiply layer underneath and kind of make more intense lighting just do light carving to kind of carve out what we need and I think this is the point where we start um, adding other effects to it like the light in the hair now is where I add a tonal curve to kind of balance the colors and make them a lot prettier add some color balance to like bring out the colors I want some level correction so it's not a harsh pure black and that's it Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you next time. Bye.